Hello. So today I would like to talk about impulses and it's a very common thing in human behavior and we all have them. No matter, no matter how kind of mindful you think you are, we all have an impulse to either act a certain way, to say something specific, um, or to think something. And we have impulses because we are alive, right? Um, and the Sanskrit word for this in yoga is samskara, essentially, or a mental impression. Now, because we have kind of preconceived notions of the way that the world works, um, and then our own experience of the world, we have impulses or we have repeated ways of being in the world, right? So, so maybe for example, you have someone who says something about a certain topic that you may feel strongly about, or maybe you don't know much about it, and you have an impulse to say something, and maybe you even speak without thinking fully, right? So, so that's an impulse to respond in a certain way. Or maybe it's just kind of a, a mental impulse where someone cuts in front of you while you're driving or someone cuts in front of you in line and you have this kind of voice in your head that turns on and that says, oh, like this is whatever, whatever the response is. So these impulses, we all have them and we actually can't ever not have them. So that's really important to remember is we can't ever stop the impulse or we could also call them a reaction, right? We can't stop having these reactions. It's natural. It's what we are meant to do. We are meant to respond to our world through thought, through word, and through action. But here is where kind of the shaping of your life comes in is we can take those impulses and we can slow them down so that those mental impulses do not turn into actions, right? A person who is characterized as a reactionary person, someone who reacts strongly to things without thinking, or someone who says things without thinking, those people tend to not have as much control over their impulses. And that behavior might play into all different aspects of their life, but it's rooted in this inability to control the impulse. Again, we all have those impulses. So now the question is, how do we control them? How do we kind of get a handle on these seemingly uncontrollable thoughts that we might have, right? Someone cuts you off in traffic and you might be like, oh, like what a jerk, and you just wanna scream. Maybe that's just the impulse. Now, if you do it, if you act on that impulse, that is a reaction, right? Your natural reaction is to yell, so you yell. So in yoga, what we try to work on is the slowing down. The only way that we can observe the difference between the mental impulse and the reactionary behavior is if we slow down enough to notice that that impulse is not me. It's not who I am, it does not define me. Now, if I continue to, to live my life based on those reactionary impulses, then that can become who I am and it can take over me. It can be, I can be defined by this personality, this reactionary person, but at the core, it's not who we are. It's just the mental stuff that's happening, right? The, the mental impressions, the samskaras, the response to being alive. So now the task is for us to slow down so that we can see when those impulses come up, when you want to yell at someone for doing something. I had a moment where I was meditating and you know, I was 
trying to be clear, trying to focus, trying to center my awareness. And um, my partner was in the other room and I heard him sniff. I heard him sniff and I heard this voice go and I wanted to, <laughs> wanted to yell. That's the impulse. Now, then you can choose how you want to respond to that impulse, right? So I was, I was in my meditation, so I was in the perfect place to observe that, that kind of train of thought, to observe how that impulse came up and then what I wanted to do and then that space between of what I wanted to do and then what I really, really wanted to do. So I asked myself, do I want to yell at him? Do I want to be mad for hearing someone go, do I want that? Will that make me feel good? And I said, no, I don't want to yell. I don't want to be angry for someone sniffing their nose. And so that dialogue that happened in my head, responding to the impulse, responding to that natural reaction, and then reshaping it, asking myself, is that what I want? Is that the person I want to be? And if it's not, then how can we change it? So it wasn't. And so in order to kind of distance myself from that and say, that's not the person I want to be, I want to be the person who laughs. And so I laughed at the whole scenario of me wanting to yell at him for sniffing, me sitting in meditation, observing that desire to yell at him for sniffing. And it just turned into this whole opportunity for me to to shape that pattern, to shape that reactionary response, that impulse, whatever it could be, whatever it is, whether it's yelling at someone else, whether it's being you know, hard on yourself, critical of yourself, that natural impulse that we have, whether it's being judgmental of another person, anything, anything it is, you can slow down and ask yourself, do I want to be that person? Do I want that reaction to be a part of this person that I want to be? Is that in line with who I want to be? And I think especially in relationships with other people, of course, that's more of a relationship with your own mind, understanding that and navigating it. But in terms of a relationship with another person, being able to have that internal dialogue is so, so necessary. Because until you get on that level with another person where they say, where they are patient and they can allow you to have that internal dialogue out loud because sometimes that has to happen. But when you're first meeting someone, right? The first communication that you have with someone, if you have that internal dialogue out loud, that might be kind of off-putting. And so we have to, we have to know how to slow down and that, act of slowing down is going to look different for everyone. Some people it's meditation, some people it's going on walks, some people it's playing music or going on a bike ride or swimming, you know, it's going to be different, but it usually is an activity where we slow down and we practice listening to the voice of the mind. And then when we listen, we can better respond intentionally. So thanks for listening and I'll see you next time.